guys, welcome back. Today I am going to be giving you the two week update on the puppies. So we're gonna be seeing all of them up close and then I'm also gonna be telling you which ones I'm going to be keeping. Now all of the puppies that I am rehoming are going to be spayed and neutered. Um, none of them are going to be bred of the ones that I'm rehoming. All of the puppies that I am rehoming are gonna be going to friends and family, which is just wonderful because I'm gonna be able to still see them and be able to interact with them and get updates on them and know that all of them are safe and well taken care of. So I'm really happy to actually be able to know that, to know that they're all going to be in good homes and that they're going to be, um, you know, happy little puppies that are just really well taken care of. So we decided to keep three of these puppies. It is a lot. It's going to be a lot of work, but I'm really excited to keep three of them. And I just plan on working, you know, really hard to train them and, you know, make sure that they're happy and played with and interacted with. Um, and then the other six are going to be rehomed. Now all of the puppies already do have a family. Um, most of them do have names. Actually I think all of them have names except there's a few that are the names like uncertain. Um, but they all have a family that is very excited and just you know waiting to get them. So they're all going to be very very loved. We're really happy that all these puppies are just so healthy and they're going to be such wonderful little corgis. I know sometimes people don't like, um, you know, that they're mixed because they're of the two corgis. They are 100% corgi, but they are 75% Pembroke and 25% cardigan, which some people don't like. Um, but I like that because I like um, breeding for the merle color and then also, you know, the Pembroke characteristics. And I think that the mix actually just creates a really nice and healthy dog. Um, some people get really upset about it. Some people just want a purebred Pembroke, which is fine. And, you know, they don't care, you know, what other people are getting. But some people actually get really frustrated and upset over it. And which I think is kind of funny. I was um, trolling um, a group recently, actually. Yes, we all troll once in a while, right? <laughs> um, because they are so, so upset about the merle color being introduced to the pembrokes and so the first thing that they'll bring up is oh well those dogs aren't tested which yes you can test um even if you are you know breeding pembrokes and uh, cardigans you can still get the dogs tested so um that's not an issue and i kind of find it funny that they always bring that up is testing when it's also you know like there'll be other breeders that breed purebred pembrokes and these same people never bring that up with them. And there are, of course, people that are like, oh, are, are you, you know, testing your purebred Pembrokes? There's people that are also asking. But it's the ones that are, you know, always bringing it up with the mixes, but never care if the actual purebreds are tested. And it's just one of the ways that they find to be critical of it. And then the other uh, thing that they're very critical of is the next point they'll bring up is that it's dangerous to breed the Merles. Um, because you can have health issues, which is true. But, you know, the thing is, is that I, I guess they're not thinking it through or they're just trying to use that argument for, for the sake of having an argument is that there are health issues when you breed two Merles together. So if you breed two Merle dogs together, you're going to end up with a puppy that's blind and deaf. So that's why um, it, it's not recommended to do that. It's very bad breeding practices. And see, with the cardigans, um, the Merle is in their genes. So you could actually have Merle genes from both sides of the family. And see, when people are breeding Pembrokes with the Merles, that's actually the reason that they're breeding a full-bred Pembroke is because there's absolutely no chance of even having the Merle genetics on one side of the family. So you actually only have the Merle genes coming from one parent, which basically eliminates having a blind or deaf puppy. I mean, of course you can still have a blind or deaf puppy because um, other things can go wrong, but not because of the Merle uh, genetics, basically. Um, so, you know, that's one of the things is they try to say that they're going to be unhealthy dogs, that they're, you know, taking the risk of you know, having a, a blind or deaf puppy. 
And it's like, no, well, that's that's actually why they're using the Pembrokes. There's no chance of that. Um, so I, I troll them a little bit because their arguments just doesn't make sense. And they get, you know, very upset that people buy, um, you know, the, the Merle Corgis. So I'm like, well, you know, that's what they're selling. Like that's that they sell for more. That's what people want. They're in demand. So yeah, that's what they're going to breed. And it is a designer breed that is becoming extremely popular and that's what people want. (laughs) And so that's what I mean by trolling them a little bit because it actually really upsets them when you say that. Um, It's these people that are breeding purebred Pembrokes and they're not you know worth the money they used to be and the merles are selling for a whole lot more money so that's mainly why they're upset is they're just not being able to sell their dogs for as much and that, that's kind of the same when it comes to testing too is that there are a lot of articles too that are um saying that testing might not be as accurate as people are thinking but if your puppies are tested, you can sell them for more. So a lot of these things are just, you know, ways that people can make more money off of selling the puppies. Of course, I am not selling my puppies. I'm not making any money off of this litter or anything like that. I just wanted to have the puppies and it's, you know, kind of a gift to my friends and family that have been wanting corkies and they really appreciate it because corgis are so expensive. So I have a lot of people very happy with me right now. <laughs> so I always tell the people that are upset about the Merle coloring and the Pembroke cardigan mixes that, you know, people can do what they want with their money. And if it's not affecting you, it really shouldn't bother you. Um, I personally did pay a lot for Clark, um, but that's my decision. Like if, you know, I want to spend that much money on my dog well (laughs) it's my money that I'm making and people are sometimes just very upset like oh like why would you spend that on your dog why would you do that it's a mix but that's what I want and as long as breeders are honest and people know what they're buying then there's nothing wrong they just are upset because it's these breeders that have the purebred Pembrokes and Um, One of these puppies is actually going to someone who has had corgis for probably over 20 years. Um, She actually did breed the Pembroke corgis um, in in the past. And what she was telling me is that she was so impressed with this litter and she was so impressed with how well Luna did. And to her, she thinks that the reason that these puppies are so healthy and that Luna didn't have any complications is because they are mixes. And she thinks that because I introduced, you know, this new bloodline from Clark's side, that we were actually able to get really healthy puppies and a really good pregnancy that didn't need assistance from a vet or anything like that. And from her experience, she was just saying how hard it is to breed Pembrokes, which is one of the things that I was actually kind of nervous about with breeding Luna is I was worried about complications and that's why I had a vet on call, you know, throughout the whole night. Um, but we're really happy that everything did go well. I wanted her to have the puppies natural and I just tried to make the best decisions for her and everything came out really well. And like I've said in other videos, I mean, you kind of have to take breed standards uh, with a grain of salt. There are some things that are really good. And then there's other things that just don't make sense. I mean, you see all of my little puppies have tails. And breed standards, you know, with the Pembroke say that they shouldn't have tails. But these dogs really aren't being used for herding anymore. So there's really no reason to even have that as a breed standard. Which is frustrating, you know. You can't show them or anything like that if they have tails. And the other thing to remember, too, is that with purebred dogs, they have changed dramatically over the past 100 years. So, for example, Basset Hounds really look almost unrecognizable if you see a picture of them from, you know, 1920. Their ears are much longer now. Um, I think they're a little bit more stubbier now. So the breeds actually do change, and I think that's one of the things is that people are so consumed and obsessed with breed standards, but there's um, sometimes really not a lot of good things that they're actually doing with that. Sometimes it, it doesn't really mean much. So I think the point is to just breed healthy dogs that are going to have healthy puppies. 
and also desirable dogs because, of course, you don't want to be breeding them if they're going to end up in shelters, if people don't want them. And, that, you know, that's one of the things I say is if your dog's a uh, mutt, then you should get them fixed because if people are not particular on the type of dog that they're getting, then it would be best to just get a dog from a shelter. Uh, so, you know, breeding dogs like this, it's because people actually do you know, want a certain type of dog. And I've heard the argument that these puppies are taking up homes from dogs that are in shelters, which is not the case, um, especially for this litter. Uh, the people that I am giving puppies to, um, they were never going to go to a shelter to adopt a dog. Uh, there's only certain types of dogs that they're interested in. And there's, you know, only certain types of dogs that they are willing to bring into their family. And that's just how it is with some people. It's, you know, not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I'm for both. I've, I have, you know, my shelter dogs and I have um, dogs from breeders. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not like um, they can take up homes when these people weren't going to go to a shelter to get a dog anyway. And then I've also seen some of the comments on these videos of people saying, well, if you, there was no, you know, breeding of the dogs, then um, they would go extinct, the dogs. Uh, now, I think it would take a very, very long time for dogs to actually, for that to happen because there's too many accidental breedings. Um, but it is definitely true, though, that if people were not breeding certain breeds, like if, you know, if people weren't going to breed corgis anymore, then yeah, those certain breeds would go extinct. Um, dogs wouldn't go extinct completely, but the breeds would if, you know, there was no more breeding. Which I don't think would be a good thing either. I think that there's a lot of different dog breeds, each um, fit and desirable to the person that likes that type of dog breed. Corgis are my thing, but there's lots of other breeds that people like and that fit well with their family. For me, corgis fit very well with my family because they are so good with animals. And so I want a dog that's going to be able to be around chickens and horses and guinea pigs and things like that and be okay with them. The corgis are also a very smart breed, um, but, you know, not to the point where, you know, border collies or some of the other herding dogs are. Uh, I think that they aren't um, as high strung. They have a lot of energy, but they're not super hyper um, like some of the other breeds like Australian Shepherds and Border Collies. To me, that's a bit too much um, for me. I, I like a dog that's a little bit calmer. Um, but again, like each person I think has a type that they like. And even people that are adopting mutts and um, dogs that aren't purebred from shelters, they're still leaning towards a certain type of dog. At least that's what I think. <laughs> he keeps lifting up his feet. It's so cute. So this is Rowan. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. Let me see your face. This is the runt. He does not have his eyes open yet. Why is your head so dirty, huh? The runt is one of the puppies that I am keeping. So this is one of the puppies that I have decided to keep. His name is Bruce. He's a red merle. And let's see, do you have your eyes open yet? No. His ears are super cute because they actually look blue instead of red. Oh, you have your eyes open. You're so cute. Look at those little blue eyes. Oh, you're so cute. This is Daisy, and this is one of the puppies that I am keeping. Uh, she's a blue Merle with a red face.
Daisy is actually the oldest in the litter. She was the first puppy that was born. This puppy, her name is Zoe. She's one of the brindles. Her coat is so pretty and I love her white markings. Her eyes aren't open yet. They are wiggly. <laughs> so that's Zoe. And here's another puppy with its eyes open. Oh, so cute. So this is the red male, and uh, he has his eyes open. This puppy, I think um, the name's going to be Sparky. I think that's what they're going with, which is pretty cute. Oh, such a cute puppy. His coat is changing. I wonder what it'll look like. He's a very calm puppy. He's one of the calmer ones. And that's Sparky. This puppy here that I am holding is Ella. She doesn't have her eyes open yet, but she is super wiggly. I don't even want to, like, try to take her out right now. And she's one of the brindles. She's very, very pretty and has a cute little face. It looks like a little bear. That's Ella. Little fatty. This is one of the blue merles. This is a boy. Um, he doesn't have his eyes open yet, and I think his name is going to be Barrett or something like that. He's a really big puppy, actually. Always has his tongue hanging out, too. So I think that one is Barrett, but... Um, not sure yet. Some, some of the people that are getting puppies, um, are thinking of a name, but haven't decided officially. But there's, there's some that have. Like, um, this one's Ella, and then that's Zoe. This puppy here is Sadie, and she was actually the very first puppy to open up her eyes. And she's a barker, this one. She's already making lots of noises. And this is one of the tri puppies. As you can see, she's already gotten a lot more brown on her face. This puppy here is Darcy, and he does not have his eyes open yet. He's also a pretty big puppy. He's a chubby little monster. <laughs> You're okay. And Darcy is actually going to go home with Ella. So those two are going to be staying together. Hey, Daisy. Daisy. Daisy, you're such a cute little puppy. Hi, Daisy. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys next time. Bye.